Hey, First this time. is Ndugu Chancellor. You know, professional drum shop. I'm, I must first say that there are only three drum shops okay. in the United States. Three. One in Chicago, Frank's, Pro Drum Shop in New York, Professional Drum Shop in Los Angeles. And the reason I say there are only three is because the rest of the places are music stores. This is a shop. Shops are where people hang out, get knowledge, meet people, learn things. I first started coming to a professional drum shop in the mid-60s when I first started playing drums, like around 65. First person I met when I came here wasn't Bob Yeager. It was Chuck. And for the longest I thought Chuck was the guy because Chuck was the voice. Chuck, you know, for the younger kids, right. Chuck started off talking to all the younger kids, you know, mm -hmm. bringing us in, you know, he had that personality mm -hmm. that, that made us feel welcome. Because Bob was always walking around fixing stuff and doing stuff mm -hmm. and talking to all of the older, matured drummers that came through. So I first met Chuck. Right. And I started coming down here and I met Jake Hanna, and Irv Kotler. Yeah, those two guys were like two of the first great drummers I met down here. Next came Max Roach. They did a clinic for Max Roach when he was with Hollywood Drums. And I came down and I met Max Roach. And from there, it just became a meeting place. Now the thing for me is a lot of times, a lot of these guys would be in here and I wouldn't know who they were unless I saw the picture on the wall or someone started talking to him. So I'm, I'm running in and out of here all of the time and I'm just rubbing elbows with all of these great drummers. I'm meeting all of these great drummers. All the great drummers of Hollywood, Earl Palmer were, was coming through here. So all of my heroes, instead of me meeting them out, because most of these guys were working, doing sessions and all of that. So instead of me meeting them out, I met them right here. And that was like my first feel of the drum community and how a drum shop was. Uh, my first trip to New York, I went to that drum shop and, and met Joe Jones. And now I had something to compare drum shops to because I'd been here and I'd met all of these guys and here they could fix it, they could bring it to you, they could order it, they could do whatever they needed to do drum related and they knew everybody and everybody came through. So it was like the whistle stop. So professional drum shop was that for me. And it still is. You know, the thing about it is, this is the last of the Mohegans. Because everything has gone by way of the big corporate store. This is still a place where I can come in and spend a couple of hours, meet new drummers, talk about different things, learn to fix, different things, learn new ideas, learn what new guy has this idea, all of this, along with just having a place to embrace all the drummers that come around. So it's, it's been that kind of thing. You know, Louis Bells and I mean all the clinics oh, that yeah. used to go through, through. The one that you did with Louis and Chad Wackerman. Yeah, that, you know, and that was one of my first clinics. 73 or 4, I think. Yeah, that was one of my first clinics because I had just mm -hmm. uh, signed with Remo at that time. Right. I don't think I had uh, my endorsement with Yamaha. I'm not sure. I don't think I did. Mm -hmm. But um, that was one of my first clinics. And I remember seeing Louis. And I didn't know what a clinic was, really, because I had never gone to any before then. You know, so all of that came from coming through this drum shop. You know, and I was a young kid. I was like 15, 16 years old coming through here. So meeting Bob Yeager and Chuck and then all of these other drummers was just a dream come true for me. Because, you know, coming from where I came from, I didn't know that I would, I would end up rubbing elbows with all of these great guys. These are guys that I read about in the, in the look with, with drum magazines and Downbeat and all of this. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing all of these guys. You know, Shelly Mann, that was my hero. That was my mentor. And they all came through here. So it was a beautiful thing. Right on. All right. Um, any other 
story that got Well, ask me there. something, Mike. You know, I don't remember just, 50 years of this, this place. Uh, like today's, um, the way we're doing it today. Is it uh, close to what it was at, back in its time? You know, the place feels the same. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I notice now is there are fewer drummers that just come and hang out. Yeah. You know, and, and when I say that, if a... A uh, Lewis Hayes or a Joe Jones mm -hmm. or a Philly Joe or an Elvin or any of those guys were in town. Mm -hmm. It was a stop you had to make. Yeah. You know, you came down here and you spent a Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. The guys might be playing at Shelley's Manhole or the Lighthouse, but they came down. They spent a Saturday afternoon here. Yeah. So everybody had a chance to talk, have coffee, talk to these guys. It's more of a hang. Yeah, it was more of a hang. We're missing that part of it, yeah. which also affects some of the camaraderie that drummers had that they don't have now. It's true. Uh, but that was the whole thing. That's why I say there were only three drum stores, mm -hmm. uh, drum shops in the country, because those three places were the places the drummers hung out. Right. And I don't mean just Joe Smo. Right. I mean... The great drummers, the Buddy Riches, the Louis Belsons, the Elvin Jones, the Max Roach, you name it, they came through the drum shop here. Sure. They went through the drum shop in New York. They went through Frank's in, um, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it was like, whenever you come to town, at some point it was like, well, what do you want to do today? Man, we got to go by the drum shop. And you come in here, you see this guy, you see that guy, you see this guy, so-and-so might be over at the Union yeah. and hear that so-and-so is over here. Now he's coming, five other guys are coming. It was a great, informative hang. That's how drummers became united. Right. That's how drummers had that whole thing of, of being a happy family. The family thing. Yeah. Wow. It's true. Yeah. It's and a and this store, now. this store has been passed down with that vibe. Oh, because it was like a smooth transition when when Chuck left. Right. Smooth transition. Bob was 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 the head honcho, mm -hmm. and then when Bob got out of here, mm -hmm. you know, you guys took it over, and it's still going with that same vibe. We can fix it. We can make it. Mm -hmm. We can do all of this. You know, and you don't get this in the the corporate world now. For example, you know, dealing with conga skins and all of that. Right. You know, I remember when you guys used to come in and just do the skins yourselves. Sure. Now you can order a skin. Right, pre-mount. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so it's all of those things. You know, say, oh man, we right. can fix this. You want to put this on that? You want Ludwig uh, uh, Tom Tom mounts on a slingerland drum? No problem. We got it. And it was done. Oh. You know, so it was all of those things. So it was it was also the the preservation of classic instruments yeah. you know yeah. you know you want you had a choice of of calf's heads or 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 uh or mylar still you know, do yeah yeah you know but a lot of guys don't know that yeah you know only in in a shop like this do you get that that vibe. yeah and now the other thing that no one ever talks about the pictures on the wall yeah didn't touch them. Nothing was saying. The pictures on the wall. When I first started coming here, all of my heroes were on these walls. So a dream of mine was one day to get up on the wall. That was a goal. You know, so that was something to work towards. You know, and all the guys made it. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, when you look at the walls, it's a walk in history book. And to talk to you or anybody that was here, or any of the drummers that was around, and you, you mention a guy's name, and you can get a whole biographical sketch on everybody's picture up on the wall yep. by somebody that has been through here. That's a good point. That's right. All right. Um, how about give me, give me a happy 50th anniversary? You know, 50 time. years is not a long time, but it's a long time. You know, I'd just like to wish Pro Drum happy 50-year anniversary. You guys have been going on since before CDs and cassettes and the Internet 
and synthesizers and electronic drums and right. all of these things. So I just like to say happy 50th and many, many more. Thank you. One more question. Who's better looking, Jerry or Stan? Watch it now. Well, uh, <laughs> it depends on if you like tomatoes or tomatoes. Um, Stan has better glasses. Uh, if I was in a fight, I'd rather have Stan on my side because he's got a little more meat on his bone. There you go. There, that'll get me <laughs> out of there. Thank you. Yeah. All right.